Hello and welcome back to the Second Chance Loop channel here on YouTube. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to watch this video presentation. Thank you. In today's video presentation, I would like to share an article that I wrote several days ago. I create video presentations of my articles to pre present the information to individuals who learn more effectively through listening and watching. To read the article, I'll bring it up and we will get started. Here's the article title. Is the medical model of treatment defining and keeping you in a box? Hello and welcome back to Second Chance to Live, my friend. I'm happy to see that you decided to stop by to visit with me. In my experience, I have learned a hard lesson many times. The lesson is that people cannot give me what they themselves do not possess. Does that mean that they are inadequate or bad people, just that I wind up frustrated when I seek to get what I need from them. I've heard this experience as liking to going to a hardware store looking to find bread. Hardware stores do not have bread no matter how many times I may, going, I may go looking and hoping to find bread in hardware stores. In my experience, I liken the medical model of treating patients to a hardware store. The likening is related to beyond the diagnosis and treatment. The medical model many time, times focuses on the diagnosis and prognosis instead of on hope. What the patient individual consumer may be told is that they may never be able to do dot, 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 because of the diagnosis or prognosis. In my experience, I have found that the medical model tends to put individuals in boxes by associating them with a diagnosis, a statement, or a conclusion, and or by a prognosis, what is going on now, or what is not going to happen in the future as a result of the diagnosis and prognosis. In July of 2013, I wrote a two-part series, Traumatic Brain Injury, Labeling Theory, and Societal Stigmatization, to explore the impact of such a box on individuals. Once a diagnosis or prognosis is made, a label is given to the individual. Once the label is assigned to the individual, the individual may find themselves identifying with the diagnosis and prognosis. Many times the label is associated with societal biases and prejudices. These limiting biases, prejudices, and stigmatization serve to reinforce to the individual that they are limited because of the diagnosis or prognosis. The individual buys into the judgment I should say, if the individual buys into the judgment and stigmatization associated with the diagnosis and prognosis, the individual may find themselves identifying with the label. Unconsciously, the individual may then find themselves internalizing and judging uh, and justifying, important point, internalizing and justifying the judgment and stigmatization brought on to them by the diagnosis, prognosis, and subsequent label that is given to them. This is a paragraph from my article, Traumatic Brain Injury Labeling Theory and Societal Stigmatization. Such labeling and stereotyping leads to a stigmatization of the individual. Through my studies and experience as a counselor, I have seen the negative impact that such stigmatization has upon the individual. In my experience, as noted, once a determination, diagnosis, or label is given to or assigned to the individual, the determination, diagnosis, or label many times consciously or unconsciously becomes, becomes the identity of the individual. I have also noted that as the individual adopts the identity of the label as their identity, they unknowingly become vulnerable to being victimized by the identity of the label by believing in the stigmatization. The internalization of the label and stigmatization then makes the individual susceptible to being controlled 
through the medical model and through societal stigmatization. And again, this paragraph is from my article, Traumatic Brain Injury Labeling Theory and Societal Stigmatization. Next paragraph of the article on this, this is the medical model uh, keeping you in a box. The impact of a diagnosis, prognosis, label, and subsequent societal stigmatization can lead the individual to believe that they are intended to remain in the box. The box in turn creates a dependency upon the medical model to treat the diagnosis and prognosis. The medical model and societal stigmatization sets the ind individual up to believe that there is little hope outside of the box. As a byproduct of the medical model and societal stigmatization, secondary gains and secondary dependencies evolve. Because of these secondary gains and dependencies, the individual may find or feel trapped within the box. Societal judgment and, stig and stigmatization of the label then perpetuates a continual need and dependency upon the medical model. In collusion, the medical model of treatment and the societal stigmatization because of the label both offer little hope. In my experience, I have seen the impact of secondary gains and secondary dependencies. Secondary gains and secondary dependencies perpetuate, limit, and discourage the individual's ambition to explore and live beyond the confines of the box created by the medical model. In my experience, I have seen how the medical model through diagnosis, prognosis, and subsequent labeling process undermines the individual's drive to look for solutions beyond the box. Once labeled and stigmatized, the individual becomes conditioned to believe that they are limited because of the diagnosis, prognosis, and stigmatization. With such conditioning, the individual may find themselves relating uh, may find themselves relating to themselves and to their world through the box mentality brought about by the medical model, stigmatization, and labeling. Today's thought, although you, may, you and I may have been given a diagnosis or a prognosis, we are not the diagnosis or a prognosis. Although we may have been given a label because of a diagnosis or prognosis, we do not have to be limited by a societal stigmatization. Although a diagnosis, prognosis, or stigmatization may have been given or placed on us, they do not have to define our existence. Although a medical model and a societal stigmatization may be placed uh, on you and I, and placed us as a result in a box, we do not have to remain in any box. Secondary gains and secondary dependencies no longer have to be our lot in life. You and I were created to be so much more than a diagnosis, a prognosis, or a label. We were created to live outside and beyond the, confine, beyond the confines of any box. This is the end of this article. Again, I want to thank you for your time. Before I go, let me encourage you with this as I need to remember. Please do not give up on yourself, a loving God, or your process because more will be revealed to us in time. The pieces of the puzzle will come together in the correct order and at the right time. I'll say so long for now. Have a great day and God bless both you and your family. So long now.